All right, so looking at biological method, I know we talk about bio, logical. Bio means life, right? So it, these are living organisms that will that exist naturally. And we, we, we say that they are farmers' friends, or we call them natural enemies because they prey on pests, insects, pests that um, affect our crops. So these, I have some of these organisms, I have a few pictures of them just to go through in terms of some of the most common one that you might see. All right, um, what you're looking at, this is a praying mantis. It feeds on different bugs, beetles, right, caterpillars, You're looking at the ladybird beetle. No, ladybird beetle. I, I put this this um this life cycle here because the adult and the larva stage. You might think that it's a totally different insect, but it is not. It's just a matter of you identifying them, All right? Um. So these insects feed on pests like aphids, scales, mealybugs. Etc. Now this this is uh, the parasitoids, and what you're looking at in the picture here, this is a parasit, a parasitic wasp. What it does, it lays the eggs on the caterpillar. The eggs will hatch, and they will feed on the internal portions of the caterpillar, sucking it dry, literally killing the the, the pests. So these parasitoids normally feed on eggs, larvae, and sometimes the pupal stages of many insects. So this now is the lace wing. This on the, on, the, on, the, on the right, the adult, and the wings are transparent and you can only really see many veins that make, make it up, I guess, hence the name. Um, they feed on the aphids, and this on the right left that you're looking at is actually their eggs. And the eggs are attached to a thin thread-like material to the leaf. Very diagnostic of its presence. All right, in terms of behavioral control, as mentioned before, we use pheromones, and it is actually a biological um, control method to the mating activity of the pest. This is what we do for beet armyworm. So the pheromone, as I said, is the sex attracts the opposite sex. In this case, we use the female scent to attract the males to the trap, then we kill them, right? They, then we have a different application, what we call the isomate. It is, it is most likely to be used in our area-wide management, not necessarily just a one farm setting for it to be effective. It has to be adopted by the entire cropping zone that the pest that is affected by the particular pest. So this, this strategy is mainly to disrupt, to interrupt its, the, the, the pest mating. So if, if they don't have the males to mate with the females, then you have less of the pest. But, that is the idea. So you reduce you reduce the population or the number of generations you get by the period. All right. So we reach down to the chemical control where we talk about the pesticides. And pesticides is all the chemicals grouped together. This is a category of all chemicals used to target pests on a whole. We have different types of pesticides. We have the herbicides. We saw the definition earlier where we, we talk about that herbicides kills plants, it kills weeds. This is what we use when we want to kill weeds. We have fungicides. The name is the target organism is generally in the name of the, of, of the pesticide, right? So if you see fungicides, it is targeting fungus, it kills fungus. We talk about nematicides, it kills nematodes. We talk about acaricides or miticides, it, it, it kills spiders, mites, mostly mites, right? We talk about 
bactericide kills bacteria. That is the idea. So all of these are pesticides. We just have different types of pesticides um, depending on what we are trying to kill. All right, in terms of how IPM putting, um, um, when you put an IPM program together for the different groups of pests. So we're talking about insects and mites, things that you can do if you have this problem or to, to minimize the situation. We talk about pulling. We talk about selection of the planting material, also treatment. We talk about use of the traps, scouting and monitoring. We talk about hand picking, pruning. And pruning is just basically taking off the leaves, taking off the affected parts of the plant. We talk about weed management, use of the mulch, the plastic mulch as a repellent. We talk about um, harv we haven't talked about our harvesting early, but it, it is a it, it is a, a strategy. So uh, and of course we talk about using the insecticides and the acaricides, the chemical management approach. Now, when you talk about diseases in terms of managing diseases using an IPM program, we talk about selecting the planting material, the virtue of raising the beds, digging trenches, you improve the drainage, you reduce the, the, the water stress, the water logging conditions that microorganisms like to, to, to just grow and multiply. If you remove the sick plant, destroy them, Solarize the soil just by in the picture here. You, you spread a uh, plastic over it. That, that's what we're talking about. Soil sol solarization, right? Normally, you, you wet the ground, you, 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 you use a plastic to cover it, make sure that it is exposed to the sun, sunlight for weeks. And it's preferably if you use a block because it traps heat, and that will help to build the heat in the soil, hence um, killing certain soil organisms, right? That may damage your plant. And of course, we talk about the insect, the, um, the, the chemical treatments, and in this case, the bactericides, the fungicides will do. Um, nematodes, crop rotation, avoiding the land that has a history of infestation, hot water treatment, of course, using nematicides as a target chemical. Um, weeds, you can you remove weeds manually or you can remove them mechanically by the track, by the, the, the tractor or the plow, right? This tail bed technique, and this technique is really encouraging the weeds to grow, killing them chemically with the, before they start feed. Because if you, if you start to control weeds when they start to seed, you're actually increasing the problem going forward. So with the stale bed technique, you will start preparing the air. You encourage it, you water it, you do everything. And then you before the weeds reach where it begins to seed, you kill it, you encourage it again, and the cycle continues for any number of times that you you want and then when you plant your crop you have less weeds to deal with what you actually do is to reduce the seed bank so by the time you are ready to plant the crop you are better off you, you, your weed management would have started and you would have the crop would have gotten away even before the, the weeds come in if they eventually come in drip irrigation again using the crop spacing or the cover crops, the pumpkin normally covers the entire ground after a while. So that will suppress weeds as well. Using the crop spacing in terms of planting certain crops closer together will suppress weed growth. And you have your herbicides or your weedicides. Now, there are certain benefits that you get from using an IPM program. Of course, you increase your quality and yield of crops. You reduce your field and your storage losses. You reduce your pesticide use. And, uh, and, and as a result of this planning pesticide use, you reduce the health risk and, of course, improve the environmental quality and the safety of food. The farmer gets to have more money in his pockets 
and of course he knows he's empowered and have the knowledge of how to properly manage his crops. All right, so I think we are right where we want to be.